All right, Kevin back with you for another episode and I am really excited for the conversation that we're going to have today. Uh, Kevin, welcome. Welcome and thank you for taking the time to do this interview. It is an honor and a pleasure and a friendship that I cherish. So thanks for asking me to be here. I'm happy to help. Well, I'll tell you, you know, I know you and I were talking before we hit the record button and I, I was like, Kevin, I was like, when was it that you and I met in Genius Network and, and you were like, Kevin, you know, it's, it's been about nine years. And I'm like, man, where does the time go? <laughs> and, so, yeah. and, and there was a time period for a couple of years uh, that, that you and I were talking regularly every week. Uh, yep. I mean, we just had a standing appointment for a couple of years and, uh, and you and I just really got to know each other. And uh, man, I just gained such an admiration and respect for you over that time period. And I am just so honored to be having this conversation with you today because uh my, my whole desire for these interviews, and then specifically in the, the conversation we're going to have, is I want to inspire entrepreneurs and CEOs to really place an intention on creating more valuable, more meaningful relationships in their lives. And so I, I know, I, I don't know what it is that you're going to share. I know you've kind of alluded to me before we started this recording. And I just told you, you know what, whatever comes up is exactly what is supposed to come up. But why don't we start with just giving everybody an idea of, you know, what, what's your background? You know, who is Kevin Breeding? What, what do you do? What motivates you to do? What do you do? Who do you serve? All of that. We'll just start there, Kev. Well, thank you for that, because uh, you, you have a unique place in my heart and life, because uh, whenever I first met you, I was an employee in an agency who was trying to figure out what was next. And I knew that there was something else out there. I didn't realize it was entrepreneurial mentoring coaching. Uh, I'd never done it before. I was scared to death. I had no idea. I didn't even know that I had something to say in the world. But through our weekly conversations there for a long time, I was like, you know, I finally worked up the guts to say yes, because uh, I had four people in the course of 10 days call and ask me, would you consider being my coach? And, you know, the, the whole time, I, mean, I don't do that. I'm an advertising guy. You know, I've been top of advertising at Walmart stores and I've been in big time agencies and all this kind of stuff. I'm an advertising guy, but these people calling and asking. And I remember um, I'd heard Dan Sullivan say this before, but you had re it in one of our conversations. If people are calling and offering to give you money <laughs> for your expertise, the answer is yes. Uh -huh. And then you figure out the rest of it. And so, so I did. And that's what launched my coaching business now nine years ago, which is hard for me to think about. But, you know, uh, Kevin, what I've found, um, I am not the guy for the masses. That's, that's just not the role that I've been called to play. That's not, you know, and, and I'm totally fine with it. I went through about, interestingly enough, um, nine and a half years ago, a bankruptcy and a divorce within the same six month period. And I was going through all that about the time that we met. And I, you probably didn't even know that for a couple of years, because I was very guarded about a lot of that. Um, but I realized through that, that I have unique life experience for business leaders, business owners, for entrepreneurs, that there are things about our life that turn mess, that we have our business running okay, but everything else that goes in our life is a flat out mess. That relationship on fire or our personal fire, or our health is a problem. You know, what, whatever it is that's going on. In fact, I mean, just in my own life, in the, in the last six months, I've had a diagnosis and a process. Just added that to as I work with entrepreneurs and business executives who are a place where they understand it's not only about the dollar. It's about having a life, having a business, having relationships, having spirituality and personal development and understanding life purpose. And you want to figure out how to move it into a place of harmony, not balance, harmony to where all of these things that you care about 
become an important part of your daily walk and your daily life. And so I'm that coach that gets into the messy and we talk about real life stuff, super, super confidential, but then we put together plans of how to turn things around to where instead of your business running you, your business becomes a funding mechanism for you to create the life and the world that you want. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. So um, when you made this transition, so it's been nine years mm -hmm. since you made the transition from, you know, I, I guess we would, was it, I mean, you were, you were C-suite level. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what was that like for you making that transition? It was, <laughs> cause I, I would imagine oh. there was, there, there's probably a little story around that too. <laughs> yeah. You know, there really is. I mean, it, <clears throat> excuse me, whenever I was, you know, I was at Walmart corporate, I was the, the global director of advertising worldwide. So anything that went out on the airwaves with the brand name had to come through my division. Uh, had more than $200 million worth of PL responsibility. And so you, you know, you had massive amounts of influence in the company. From that, realized that my profession was great, but my home life was terrible. I was traveling 200 days plus a year outside the United States. I had two small children. That's not healthy. Uh, and so I had to shift and make that move. And so I left. Um, I left corporate and ended up in, an, in a, an agency that was a fraction of the size, but still handled some big accounts. Um, but even with that, it was still me working to live rather than, you know, just, I, I just, I just had it out of balance and I had to, to ultimately, you know, work through what did that need to, what did that need to work around? Although the, the, the fallout of all of those years of big corporate world ultimately resulted in me going through a divorce. Um, but I knew that I had to rebuild my life in a way that I was okay with, in a way that was authentic to who I was, uh, the kind of life that I wanted to, to build, uh, the things that would let me focus on the, you know, the kind of projects that I wanted to work on. And that's ultimately how I literally fell into the coaching realm. And, and it was all this idea of, I wanted the title, I wanted the money, I wanted the prestige, I wanted the, you know, speaking on platforms around the country because I was a high sought after executive to realizing none of that matters if in the morning I look in the mirror and I don't know who that person is. Mm -hmm. And that ultimately is what came down to is realizing that I wasn't square with who I was as a person. I was playing a character in business. And the, and the hard part was I was really good at it. I could absolutely do that. The danger in that is, is it left me completely empty and void. And so my bank account might look good, but man, my, my personal, moral, spiritual, physical, emotional bank account was absolutely bankrupt. And I knew that that's not sustainable long-term. And so uh, that's why I had to make the shift personally. And I started putting together, you know, sort of the, the blueprint that I wanted to use. Mm -hmm. And I've now had opportunity to invite people in from a coaching standpoint to say, you know what, let's look at what you want life to really look like and how much does it take to get there? You know, we, entrepreneurs are, are, I mean, we're visionary by design. I mean, we all kind of think in the future. But often we think in the future in generalities and we never actually get into the specifics of what do I want to work? How much do I need to make? How much time do I want to spend working? How many free days do I want to use Dan Sullivan's phrase? Where are my health goals? Where are my personal development goals? Where are my spirituality goals? Where's my life purpose? And am I doing anything to serve any of those? Or like most of us, is the business just owning me in every way, shape or form? Yeah. Yeah. I was, and I decided that's not good enough. That's not the life that I wanted to live. Yeah. And I'm sure that there's a lot of CEOs and entrepreneurs that can totally relate to that. <laughs> I know there was a time in my life when I sure as heck did. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so, 
Well, I really appreciate you sharing all that, Kevin. I'm, I'm really excited to dig into the, the other part of your story and your experience. And so I'll reiterate the question that we're going to dig into for the benefit of everybody listening. And, and so here's the question. Have you ever met or been introduced to a person that completely changed the course of your life or your business so much so that much of what you have today wouldn't even be possible if not for this person. And I am really wow. excited to uh, hear your story, your experience around this. I got to tell you, Kevin, uh, when you first posed this question, um, I thought, yeah, there's probably three or four that I could talk about. Uh, the time that I've had between when we first talked about it and today, there's probably 20 or 25 instances like that. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are a couple that sort of rise to the top, but there are two or three, uh, yourself included, I have to confess, um, is one of those experiences where had I not had that influence or hadn't had that conversation or hadn't had that personal investment into me, I wouldn't be where I was today. There's no question. Mm -hmm. No question. You know, I, when I think about kind of um, one that I would call out, uh, and, and I have to offer an apology right up front, because I have yet to stop and have this conversation personally with the individual that I'm going to talk about. Okay. Okay. Um, you and I met through the incredible world of Genius Network with Joe Polish. Joe Polish is one of those guys that has no idea he has categorically transformed my life and probably not for the reason that he might think. If you don't know Joe's story, you know, he was in the carpet cleaning business. He was in addiction. He had a, a terrible drug problem, was at a point where his life was very near being lost and decided that he had to take ownership of where he was, change the trajectory of his life, and started creating a community for people who were building businesses similar to what he had, and that it ultimately transmuted into what Genius Network is today. Um, at the time that I met Joe, I was an employee of a company that was part of Genius Network. So I wasn't even paying to be there myself. Um, but what Joe did is one, he never treated me any differently than anybody else that was in the room. I mean, all these titans of marketing were in the room. I'm here just to sort of invest and give as much as I can give. And I kept seeing here's somebody who absolutely train wrecked everything in their life, dreamed a new vision and built it. That is the thing that inspired me to get out of my pity party, to quit you know, beating myself up over a divorce and a bankruptcy and say, you know what? That is past. You are no longer that person. You are now this person. And every time I would go, um, it, it, you know, it, again, Joe had far more influential players in the room, but every single time he would stop and he would pay attention to me like I was the only person in the room. He would ask me, how are you and how are you doing? And the thing about it is, Kevin, he didn't even know at the time that I was going through divorce and bankruptcy. He had, he had no idea. I remember one night, um, I, I, it was the next to last year that I was part of Genius. Uh, and for the record, I hope to be back into it pretty soon. Um, I was at a private dinner with about six of us, and I'll withhold the names just for confidentiality's sake. But Joe decided that night to share his personal story in depth with detail about his addiction and about how dark it actually was. And I remember thinking, here's a guy who has an organization of, at that time, you know, 200, 240 people who were paying him good money to be part of the group. He was delivering transformative experiences every single time you were in there. You just, you'd walk out slayed every single time. And this guy was still uniquely connected to where he had come from. And he never lost the appreciation of the gift that he was given in reviewing his life. That changed me. 
that changed me in a way that I realized that if Joe could do it, I could do it because I'd never been that low. I'd been, I'd been, you know, bankruptcy and a divorce, but my life wasn't in danger. And I realized that all I needed to do was to change. Well, it wasn't very long after that, that the folks who had reached out to me about coaching had called. And again, through wise counsel and good friends like yourself said, if people are calling you say yes and figure it out. And so I gave it a try. And that has then turned into this wonderful opportunity to where I have the ability to roll up my sleeves, get down in the mud with somebody who is most of the time successful, although I have some that are, you know, startup sort of folks. And we just get into where life is. And it's the real stuff. It's not the Instagram version. It's not the Facebook version, not the LinkedIn version. It's where life really is and saying, where am I today? Where do I want to be? How do I get there? And then we just lock arms and we love each other enough to work our way through it to where we can re-engineer and reinvent lives. There is no greater gift in this world than to be able to take somebody through that kind of transformation. I love it. I, I absolutely love it. I don't care if it's scalable. I don't care if it, it is, you know, it, it's not ever going to be, uh, you know, a 20, $30 million course that sells to thousands of people while I'm asleep. I don't care. I love taking one soul in one moment, in one's pace of time and just saying, what is past is past. You're a new person. Let's re-engineer your life. Yeah. It is so powerful. It's, it's, I mean, it's amazing to get to do it and I'm honored to get to do it. And I love being part of that every single day. Yeah. Wow. What an amazing story and experience, Kevin. It's, you know, it's so interesting because, you know, you, you go to so many events or, or networking events <laughs> and so much of it is just this surface level bullshit <laughs> yeah that is and yeah. and yet you know what you just shared you know you like you you'd been a genius network you'd known of joe for a while you'd already had this experience of being around joe and just had this immense appreciation for how he made you feel when you were in that group yep. but yet when the group of you went out to dinner that evening and he shared some really intimate and personal mm. stuff about his life that, you know what? He's not going to broadcast that kind of conversation from the rooftops. That ain't going to happen, you know? Nope. But in that small group, he felt safe enough to do that. And, and mm -hmm. I, I know you, you know, uh, as you shared that, I'm just like, you know what? I have been in a small group where Joe shared that way. And... Um, and yet when somebody shares that way, that's when we really connect with them. And it's, you know, and it's like, you know, you, you talk about, you know, being vulnerable and being open and being candid. And a lot of people are like, I don't know, I don't want to do that. But yet when we are in a place where we feel safe doing that, Man, I'll tell you, I'm, I, I'm sure that anybody else who was there with you that evening just had a whole new outlook on Joe, just had a whole new appreciation for Joe because of what he shared and, and had a whole new connection with him because of yeah. that. Well, you know, it's interesting now uh, with the, the advantage of time, I now understand that that's whenever he was wrestling with the concept of beginning a foundation for addiction recovery. This was part of his, you know, working it out to figure out how he wanted to bring that next level of what he was doing to help support people who had fallen into addiction and how to get past that. But even even more importantly than that, and and I, I want to be super sensitive here, so I, I'll be careful with names. But the last time that you and I were in the same room together, there is an introduction that I don't think either one of us knew was going to be as profound as it has been. And, and again, with a mutual friend of ours that is a, a titan in the marketing world, as far as I'm concerned, and for whatever reason, he and I have created this friendship so much so, and I'm not even sure you're aware of this, that as I went through my cancer treatment this last year, this particular individual was texting with me daily, 
wanting to know, how are you? Are you doing okay? Is there anything that I can do? Can I leave my projects tomorrow and come sit in the hospital with your wife while you're in surgery? Business networking people don't just do that. Lifetime soul friends do that. And you had no idea um, that, you know, this was all happening sort of behind the scenes. You were just getting together quality people in a room the way that you are so talented at doing and magic just happens. And so it absolutely is a testament to this idea that whenever entrepreneurs will step forward, take off the mask, quit trying to impress anybody with whatever sales they had last month and just love on somebody where they are in the moment, whether they are successful or struggling. Yep. That is when the magic happens. And that's where the community that we operate in becomes something so far beyond what the corporate world is. We are literally warriors with each other for the sake of each other's good. Yeah. And that's about the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's cool because without revealing who you're talking about, uh, I recently did an interview with somebody else and they were talking about that same individual. <laughs> and, uh, and um, yeah. you know, I'll tell you, you know, hearing you say that, man, it just gives me goosebumps because, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, we all want to grow our businesses. We all want to create more revenue. We all want to make a bigger impact in the world. But you know what? I believe that what we all really, want most is more meaningful and real relationships. That's what everybody thousand, wants yeah. more of. <laughs> a thousand percent, by far a thousand percent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Well, and, and I, and I want to say, and, and I, I mean, I realize we're on your podcast, and so I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't want to just blow smoke at you. You are one of, if not the, most influential networkers I've known. And it's not because you remember everybody's profession and what they're good at and their, you know, their email address or their website or whatever. You remember people, their experience and what real value they add to the marketplace and to the world as salt and light. I don't even know that you know that you do that, but you do it organically. And the things that uh, in the, you know, the groups that I've been in that, that you've been leading, they really are life-changing rooms. And it's because there's no pretension. You just have this idea that says, I love these people. I've invited them to come into a room together because I believe that they can help one another. Magic shows up and you get to sit back and watch. And I mean, it really is a spectacular gift and i want to thank you for it because our community needs that so many mar uh, networking events and this sort of thing are veiled sales conferences where everybody's trying to sell somebody their next program their next gimmick their next you know course their next whatever the events that i've been in where you were hosting you had people who genuinely came in the room saying i don't need to take anything out of this room today I need to give everything into this room today. And that's why it is so special is because you invite special people. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. That, I, I appreciate you sharing that because sometimes we can't see what's right in front of us. And I have certainly been guilty of that, of not knowing my real gift. And, and it's, it's taken some time to just even get to where we are right now and, and be able to just step into this role as much as I have. And so it really means a lot when somebody like yourself shares that. So thank you, Kevin. Um, anybody that just it might be listening to this and be like, you know what, man, I really like that Kevin guy. I like what he stands for. I like what he shared so far. I, man, I'd like to just get to know him a little bit better. How, how can anybody follow up with you or find out more about the work that you're doing, Kev? Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, simple. Uh, KevinBreeding.com is the website. It's just my first first and last name.com. And then also KevinBreeding at gmail.com. I'm a simple email guy. Uh, that is my real email, not a marketing email. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to have a conversation with anybody that is looking to get control of their life and have it feed them. 
I just think so many of us are giving away our power. We're giving away our expertise. We're giving away our energy. And instead of letting uh, the company that we're building feed us, we're letting it use us. And that's just not where I want to be. Yeah. You know, I, I always remember Dan Sullivan always used to say, every entrepreneur completely deserves the company that he's built. <laughs> yeah. And that always resonated with me as if you built a crappy company that uses you up and spits you out, you deserve it because you built it that way. Yeah. I'm in the business of unbuilding and rebuilding. Yeah. yeah. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for taking the time to have this conversation. I was really excited to hear your story, your experience. And uh, man, th this has been awesome. And I am now really excited to be able to share this with other entrepreneurs and CEOs. So thank you once again. And I love you like a brother. I'm excited to see what you're doing and how things are working. We need voices like you and I thank you so much. Well, thanks for that. All right. Bye for now. We'll see you.